All right, so uh, people will continue to come in, but we want to start on time. Um, my name is, I am Reverend Dr. Mitzi Smith, your host of these Womanist Dialogues. I'm also the J. Davison Phillips Professor of New Testament at Columbia Theological Seminary in Decatur, Georgia. Our topic tonight is healthfulness, transformations, and I should say yoga and not exercise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we are, we are particularly wanting to target the 40 and over, although I am well over 40. Uh, group and to think about the possibilities in the midst of this pandemic. Self-care involves care of the body, the mind, and the spirit. We are connected, complex human beings, fearfully and wonderfully made. We only get one body, however but it is never too late to start caring for ourselves in holistic ways. The human body, I found, tends to be quite forgiving. A goal of self-care is self-discovery. And in the process of self-discovery, Bell Hooks, the Black feminist, Bell Hooks, writes in her book, Sisters of the Yam, I highly recommend that book, quote, Black women must learn how to face death and dying in a manner that enables us to restore and renew our spirits, and I would say minds and bodies, unquote. We live in lands rigged with systems that do not mean for us to survive. So self-care is critical. We can learn from our ancestors, but we can also discover new ways and methods to which uh, new ways and methods to which our ancestors did not have access or did not have the privilege or the means to pursue. Many of our ancestors did not have the luxury or the time to engage in self-care. They were too busy trying to survive. And so we dedicate this space, this sacred space to them. We take this time in honor, in their honor, we honor them by taking this path towards self-care, a path of self-discovery for the benefit of ourselves, our communities, and the work that our souls must do. With that in mind, I'd like to introduce you to our panelists tonight. Our first panelists, and the order in which I introduce them will be the order in which they will speak, is Kimberly Boyd. She is a dancer, an educational consultant, a registered yoga teacher, and a yoga therapist certified by the International Association of Yoga Therapists. Kimberly is also the CEO of Dancing Between the Lines Incorporated, an umbrella organization with programs that offer the, the unique integration of learning, creativity, and wellness for individuals, communities, and institutions. She's the founder of Spirit Field Yoga and Wellness. Kimberly is a community wellness advocate and a yoga therapist in private practice. She specializes in creative approaches to the application of yoga and meditation techniques to lessen the effects of suffering caused by stress, anxiety, illness, trauma, injury, or disease. And uh, you can find her on Facebook and uh, at Spirit Field Yoga and Wellness and on, on Twitter as Kimberly Boyd, Inc. I first met 
Kimberly from living in the Detroit area. And I had a women's empowerment conference and she did a session on yoga. And I had been, I think everybody at that, at that conference was hooked on yoga from that moment forward. Our next panelist is Reverend Kimberly Edwards. Would you wave at our, at our audience? Thank you. Reverend Kimberly Edwards is an international plus size model and a model coach. She is a retired music educator. Let me tell you something about all these women out here taking care of themselves. We all look younger than we are because of self-care, right? <laughs> Maybe except Bridget. She, she, she. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Somewhere. Uh, so Kimberly is a retired music educator uh, with the Detroit Public School from the Detroit Public School System and an associate minister at New St. Mark Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan. She now serves as a faith community liaison for the Detroit Public Schools Community District. Reverend Edwards received her master's in music from Wayne State University and a master's of art in practical uh, theology from Maslin Theological Seminary. Uh, and she will share with us her journey of transformation. Our next guest, wave your hand please, is Bridget Sesney. Did I pronounce your name properly? Okay. She is born and is, and is working out of Mississippi. She says she is born of Mississippi red clay. She is committed to creating spaces for education, liberation, empowerment, and healing grounded in the words of Audre Lorde. Quote, self-care for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation and that is an act of political warfare, unquote. Bridget unapologetically executes this mission by working in the educational nonprofit sector and through her company, Universal, Universal, U-N-I-V-E-R-S-O-U-L, Universal Wellness. You can find her on Instagram as well. That's where I met her. Uh, it is a company, Universal Soul Wellness, is a uh, company focusing on holding spaces of self-care and mindfulness for BIPOC, by, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, by people of color, students and communities through yoga, doula services, and wellness trainings. Bridget is a graduate of Dillard University uh, with a BA in biology and Christian Brothers University uh, with a master's in education. Uh, she is an Ayur Ayurvedic, I'm not sure if I pronounce that properly, Ayurvedic yoga specialist, and she is currently completing her doula training. Then we have the Reverend Linda Seats Ogletree. Please wave your hand. Yes, welcome. She is a pastoral theologian and educator. She has a master's in Christian ministry from Ashland Theological Seminary and a master's in dispute resolution from Wayne State University. She is the founder and president of Release and Refresh Women's Empowerment Series Inc., a 5013C3 nonprofit, and she is a best selling author of several books. She is also uh, a producer of, she is a musician. She, she sings and has produced her CDs, which I have heard, and they are wonderful. So those are our presenters. Each of our presenters will speak for, for 10 to 12 minutes. And then we will take questions from our audiences. We have audiences on Facebook. We have audience and audience here uh, on Zoom. So we will start with uh, Kimberly Boyd, then Kimberly Edwards, then with Bridget, and then with Reverend Ogletree. 
wonderful greetings, everyone. It is an absolute honor to sit in your presence and company. Um, if I may, uh, have the privilege of sharing the screen. What I thought I would do for my time is introduce you to the idea of yoga therapy. So I think that um, as much as people may already know about yoga, uh, the question might be, what exactly is a yoga therapist? Um, what do they do? <laughs> and so, uh, if I may, uh, uh, yoga therapy, let's see. I uh, is the clinical application of yogic philosophies, breathing techniques, physical exercises, and meditation practices. And what it seeks to do is to mitigate or lessen the effects of illness, stress, injury, anxiety, depression, trauma, and disease. Okay? And we do this by considering uh, the observation of the qualities of the principles of yoga or um, wellness. And you may notice that I have in the box here, uh, mind, body, and breath. And that's because from a clinical perspective, and I did a year long rotation in the Department of Integrative Medicine at the William Beaumont Hospital here in um, uh, Detroit, Michigan. It's the only uh, um, yoga therapy program that's associated with a major medical institution, I think still worldwide. Um, we're not allowed to say things like spirit in clinic unless and until our clients introduce the idea. But anybody who knows anything about theology probably knows that the word for breath is also synonymous with spirit. And so in the yoga therapy practice, we know that there's a lot that we can connect to and observe if we observe the breath, which is why yoga as a, a practice is really concerned with the integration of the breath as well as the movement. Okay? And so uh, my mission is to invite those who come to me or through me to have an empowered experience of their own self-care. Because we know by now, because it's in the news in case it's a shock for anybody, all of the studies and the medical information was not based on black people in general, black women in particular. And so it is my mission that everyone that comes through my doors um, has an opportunity to really understand themselves enough to engage in the revolutionary act of self-care, take care of yourself before it gets to be an issue. And then when we have to go into spaces where we seek the support of um, um, medical advice that we can be our own best advocates, in order to do this, we're gonna have to stop and make a practice of self-care. And the simple acronym is the one that I use. And we notice that the, the S and the T and the O and the P remind us to take some moments of stillness, to breathe and observe where we are, how it's going so we can proceed from a more powerful place. And so uh, it looks a little something like this, that in our busyness, busy taking care of everyone else, if we simply stop and sit or stand from a place of stability and invite some silence, we can hear that still small voice who's always speaking to us. And how many of us have ever said, you know, something told me, well, that something is that innate spirit of God, the God of your understanding that is trying to tell you something before it gets to be chronic. And so right here, right now, I invite everyone just to sit with the soles of your feet, grounded into the earth, let your spine be nice and long. And from this dignified place, simply take a breath. Now, breathing is something that we hear a lot. People are always commanded to breathe, right? But the, but the study of breath and the science of breath is a whole branch in the world of yoga called pranayama, which is synonymous with the idea of life force. And listed on the screen now are all the different ways we can think about breathing depending on what we need. And since we are uh, working with the crowd of 40 and up, I thought we might be interested in that cooling breath, sitali breath in Sanskrit, one that invites um, the release of heat. So anytime you feel that thing called a hot flash coming on, or whether you're just in a hot situation, you need to cool down, I invite you to do this. Just simply breathe in through your lips as though sipping through a straw and notice the coolness of the breath as it enters. And then 
exhale through your nose or through your lips to release the warmth and repeat. And so um, there are a lot of different ways to breathe. And there was a study out of Wayne State University that showed that if on the onset of a hot flash, if you begin that breath, get stable and still, don't panic, begin that breath, you can either interrupt the hot flash or lessen its effects. Right? The OM means we're going to be observing. So from that place of stillness, having taken a breath, um, what are you thinking? And what's going on with your body? Now, we are really, really smart right? about what it is that we need. So sometimes when we are under stress and duress, the muscles get tight. That's an invitation to reverse the curse and simply find some natural way to move. And we're all seated in these Zoom meetings from zooming to zooming to zooming. So every 10 minutes or so, I invite you to just figure out how to move your body in some way that makes sense for you. So everybody right now, just stretch. You cannot get it wrong. Just stretch and reach and make sure that you're breathing. And from the widest point of your arms, breathe in and then exhale and rest back. And then notice how you feel just having moved for like under three seconds. And then the P in stop means that if we can do all of that, then we can certainly plan to proceed with patience, persistence, and power, but we have to practice these things. And so that's what I love about this panel and opportunity. What are the ways in which we can literally practice our wellness? Because the best project you'll ever work on is you. <laughs> and so uh, this is my uh, private practice. And so, as was mentioned before, um, virtually, as well as in person, uh, groups and individuals, uh, an opportunity to take a look at our wellness and see how we can be empowered to all of that. And we have coming up a very special workshop on June 20th, which is in fact moving magnificently through menopause, which shows up somewhere in your life between when you um, have your first menstrual cycle all the way on to your last and beyond, because I don't know about you, but I may go down, but not without a fight. <laughs> and so uh, being uh, uh, well, for the rest of our lives, I think should be the mission. And so I am grateful to sit in a circle of women who are interested in that idea. So uh, thank you. Good evening. Thank you so much, yes. Uh, so we need to stop sharing the screen if, if you're finished with the share screen. Uh-huh, so I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna have to exit and then stop my share. Okay. Um, all right. You ready? Yes. All right, good evening. Um, thank you, Dr. Smith, for inviting me. Uh, my name is Kim Edwards. Um, I'm an everyday person. I've had many titles, but I'm an everyday person. And today I just wanna share with you um, my transformation, um, which has been ongoing. And my transformation is mostly um, dealing with my weight issues among some other things. And the first thing that I'd like to say is that I've had a lifelong struggle with um, my weight. Um, I was a big kid. I was a big teenager. Um, when I got into college, I added on a few pounds. So the, the girth, and I'm tall, I'm 5'10". So where, where it may not look as if, you know, oh, you're not that big, but because I'm tall, I can carry some weight. And so it's been a struggle for me. And in my 20s, as I began to uh, teach music, I decided that um, I needed some stress relief, so I started going to the gym. And then I noticed some transformation. Um, Unfortunately, in my 30s, I let life take over. Isn't that interesting? Don't we all yeah. sometimes let life take over? Well, <laughs> forget who we are, 
and we forget to put ourselves first. We forget to put make ourselves a priority. Mm -hmm. And so in my 40s, <laughs> I decided to take control. Um, it was uh, 2015. I was, uh, I had just had a show, I modeled, and I had just done a, um, a fashion show, a runway show. And when the pictures came back, now, this is what you need to understand about um, modeling. You're a hanger. So people have different ideas of what they want for their product. But outside of being a hanger, I'm a person. While the designer may have liked what they saw, I didn't like what I saw. And I decided that it was time for me to do something about it. And so at that point, I decided that what I was doing wasn't working because in my 20s, again, I had started to work out. I was watching what I was eating, but I'm in my 40s. My 40-year-old body was not like my 20-year-old body. Mm -hmm. So there are ways that you can lose weight in your 20s that your 40s say, oh, no, that's not going to work. So the one thing that I decided to do is to get some help. And it's okay to get some help. So I went to, um, through my insurance program, I went to a weight management program that taught me some things about the nutrition and how I was to eat to help me become the person that I wanted to become. And with that, I stuck with the program. I met with a counselor, I think every week or whatever. And I learned some things. I learned number one, that for me, there are certain things that I, that work against me as far as how I carry my weight. So we think we always tell people, oh, you need to eat healthy. You need to eat, you know, your fruits and your vegetables and your meat and and to balance it out. But what I found that for me in my 40s, the very thing that I was eating was the thing that was causing me to keep the weight on. And for me, that was the fruit and the sugars that were in the fruits. We are always told that, you know, you eat your fruits and your vegetables. And some of us like fruit more than we like vegetables. But what I found out was that even if it was natural sugar, it still turns into fat. Your carbohydrates that are like simple carbohydrates, they turn into fat. Mm -hmm. And so I had to learn how to limit those things. And with that, um, the weight started to come off. I also exercise. Um, back then in 2015, I think I was doing maybe exercise bike. I would do videos or whatever, but for me, 80% of losing weight was what I ate. And I found that to be really, really interesting. And once I got the weight off, I think it took about maybe a year. And I think I may have lost 65 pounds or so. But I've been a range of sizes, anywhere from a 22, 24 to a size 10, 12. So, um, yeah. Um, but I had to do some things that were for me. Mm -hmm. And once you lose it, here comes the hard part, <laughs> which is the maintaining and keeping it off. Because how many times have we all said, you know, I'm going to go on this diet and I'm going to get fine. And then, <laughs> you know, but the idea of doing a diet is something that's temporary. You really have to think about it in terms of health and lifestyle changes. So the things that you know aren't good for you, you can have sometimes, but you can't have it every day. Um, I don't believe in denial and denying myself of things that I want, but I also realize that there are times when it's not good for me. And I have to remember, if I love me, then I have to do the, the thing that's best for me, is eating that piece of cake gonna be good for me today? Am I going to be upset with myself tomorrow when the scale looks different than it did, you know, today? 
-hmm. So those are some of the things that I had to um, just consider. Um, I also had to put my stress in check. Now, Dr. Smith um, mentioned that I'm a retired music educator. I was a music educator for 25 years. I retired in July of 2018. Um, it was time. <laughs> I had no idea the level of stress that I was under until I walked away. Mm, mm, mm. When I walked away, then I had to deal with the trauma. I didn't even know that I was carrying around within my body so much trauma. And it wasn't from teaching. It was everything else that goes along with teaching in a school system and bureaucracy mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So I had to, in a sense, I felt like I had PTSD and had no idea. So I had to deal with that. What was I supposed to do? Guess what I started doing? <laughs> I started walking. Mm -hmm. I started walking outside in nature, just communing with God and his creation and learning to release all of those things that I had pent up in my body that I had no idea that were there until I walked away and it started coming to the surface. And I was really, 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 really thankful that I had that opportunity. And the great thing is I live in Michigan. And if any of you know anything about Michigan, Michigan has some very interesting weather. <laughs> I decided for me as an act of self-love that I would continue to walk even when it got cold, even when there was snow outside. Um, I didn't so much do rain. If it was drizzle, sure, I'd walk in the drizzle, but not the heavy rain, but I would walk in the snow. And, um, but I just had to make myself a priority. Um, I took the outside walking to the gym because it's all a process. For me, the gym was intimidating <laughs> mm -hmm. because there are people who go to the gym and you have this concept of what people look like in the gym. But we have to remember, number one, we all have to start somewhere. Yes, yes. Number two, we're not there to compete with anyone. We're there to better ourselves. And so with that, I went in, I work hard, I eat as clean as I can, mm -hmm. but I want something that is um, not something that I would eat on a normal day, I'll have it so that I can get it out of my system. Because the other thing is, is when you continue to deny yourself, you start eating everything else until you get that very thing that you want. So um, I, I'll, I'll eat what I want when I want it. Um, but then I have to let it go. <laughs> I can't overindulge. But the most important thing is this pandemic time came, right? <laughs> <laughs> and my gym closed down. And it was like, what am I left with? And it was like, oh my goodness, it's me and this. I'm with myself. And I'm going to be honest. I experienced some anxiety. And with the anxiety, I started eating. But the good thing is, is that I didn't have the stuff in the house <laughs> that um, would negatively affect my weight. But it was just like, I had to figure out why was I eating? And then it was because I'm stuck in this house because the world is changing. And I had to start having these conversations with myself. What's going on with you? Why are you eating this? You're not even hungry, you know? And it took a few weeks. But I got myself back together. I do work out at home, um, either walking outside, walking inside on the treadmill, doing videos. I do video workouts, um, all kinds, whether it be weightlifting, um, African dance. I'm going to have to try the yoga. <laughs> but I'm here. I'm happy. 
And I just take it one day at a time and I learn to be kind to myself. Because I think that's important. We all have to be kind to ourselves. We can't beat ourselves up and then expect for our bodies to behave in positive ways. I transform because I love me. <laughs> and once we get to that idea of self-love, then we begin to love ourselves. We love our bodies. We love our minds. We love our spirits. And, and we can start to see the transformation that we want to see in ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's all I'd like to share for today. Yes, thank you so much, Kimberly. We're gonna have a lot of questions. We'll be, we'll be coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so now we go to Bridget Sesney. And uh, I need to make sure here that um, I now spotlight her video and unspot mm -hmm. and unspotlight uh, this one. All right. Hello, hello everyone. I am so happy, so excited to be here. Like Reverend Dr. Mitzi said, I am Bridget Sisney, coming to you all from the mighty Mississippi. I go by the Mississippi River weekly to remind myself of the abundance of the power that God is and does. So I'm just happy to be here with you all. I want to take a moment and introduce myself. Um, a big part of Mississippi family and culture is who you are and who your people are. So I would be remiss if I did not start off by, you know, introducing myself with who my people are. I am the daughter, the youngest daughter of Stanley and Dora Sisney from Anguilla, Mississippi. I am the youngest granddaughter on both sides of my family of RT and Willie Gibson Sisney, of King and Betty Watts Evans. So those are my people, those are my roots and where I come from. You know, we trace back our history, mm -hmm. Alabama, all the way to the Carolinas. Um, I am so fortunate that my parents, my grandparents were able to write down a sound mind in 97, all the way back to his birth. Um, and so I keep that as my legacy in knowing that every space that I occupy and enter, I bring my ancestors and my family with me and I also have a sense of responsibility to them to make sure that I uphold the family name. And so a part of that history and that work is kind of how I got into the service of others um, from a young age of growing up in the church and just in the place of if somebody on the street is missing something, you do what you can to give it to them. That sense of community and responsibility. And if we all don't make it, none of us make it runs deep through my veins and that is how I view every space that I enter whether it was in high school or college or a master's program or now as I'm starting my doctoral studies um, I feel the same way of community and so I want to uh, pass it down in every space I occupy and so I know Dr. Missy told you all I am an Ayurvedic yoga specialist and I just completed my 500 hour um, register yoga teacher training. So that's a big accomplishment in yoga world. That is 500 hours of study and, you know, over 100 hours of application, over a thousand hours of teaching. And I started this journey back in 2014 and, and now at the 500 hour point and just complete, you know, and did the extra work of the Ayurvedic yoga specialist. And so I'll tell you all, very similar to, to our panelist, Kimberly Boyd, my background is dance. I grew up and went to a performing arts school from like fourth grade all the way to a senior in high school, was on the dance team in college. Movement um, is a big part of my life. Dance at church as a liturgical dancer and flag ministry. Um, and so I, I best express myself through movement and from there just being strengthened with knowledge and wisdom, words started to come out that kind of sound like they're pretty well fit together. Um, but I really made this shift from dance to yoga. When in high school, I was diagnosed with scoliosis, um, a crooked spine, essentially. I had two C curves. Well, I have two C curves, one in the upper lumbar and one in the lower sacral region. Mm -hmm. um, you know, by the grace of God, they almost balance each other out. One is a 45 degree angle and the other one is a 47. So usually only my seamstress knows what's going on. 
Um, but from there, the impact started to um, impede on my digestive system. So I have tons of like digestive things that we work through. And so the doctor, you know, talked about a brace and talked about surgery and we didn't, you know, land on either of those things, but landed on strengthening your physical body will help you. And so from there, you know, this was what, 2007 in Mississippi, we were like, okay, exercise, you know, and then yoga came up to be um, a regiment that could help. And thus, you know, I got serious about it because I was not at a point where I wanted to sacrifice dance or movement as my form of expression. And so from there throughout life, just kind of continued yoga to strengthen myself and the mental and the spiritual effects slowly came along as that added benefit after I got to a place of physical strength and I saw and found that the, the other physical effects of yoga around controlling my breathing and strengthening my mental fortitude seemed to help me more than, than the strength that I had in my spine now, the strength that I now found in my core. Um, and so from there, w when I started teaching, so very similar to Reverend Kimberly now, um, I started teaching in the educational school system, taught middle school students. And as I, at that point in life, was a very, you know, devout and avid, you know, yoga, this is what I need for my physical form. This is what I need for my mental health. Mm -hmm. I saw that my students were lacking some of the tools that I had a cup that I that I had accumulated throughout my journey through yoga, through spirituality, through just education in general. And so I wanted to share that with them. I taught in a predominantly black and brown um, school in the inner city in Memphis. Mm -hmm. uh, one hundred percent of our students were on free and reduced lunch. And so I wanted them to have a space where they were able to successfully process the world that was happening around them, that they were able to have tools and resources to self-soothe, to self-regulate, to begin to increase their mental fortitude so that when traumatic events happen, that they started to have tools and resources to help them process what was happening. Mm -hmm. So we started as a yoga club in Miss Sesame Science classroom after school. And from there, we just continued to grow to what now is universal wellness, where I've now had the opportunity to teach yoga in middle schools in, in inner city as a class for students. Mm -hmm. So you come in, they take off their backpacks, and we do yoga as a class. And that is a phenomenal experience. You know, we've done that from third to 12th grade. Um, I am, I now work with, you know, our high school athletes after school, you know, they call me Miss Bridget, Miss B, and we're able to do that work and expose them to it. And I'll tell you all, some of the, the work that gets us to yoga is the conversations that we have um, with students around their self-care of how they're using the resources we learn on the mat when they get off of the mat, when they're ooh, 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 ooh. with people in their external world. How they tell me, y'all, it's, it's the amazing thing when they tell me, Miss Sisney, I counted down from five and I didn't hit her in the face. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> hit her in the face. That's what I'm talking about, you know. Or they tell me, you know, I was about to pop off on my boss at the, you know, Popeyes where I work, but I didn't. I took a breath. I let my exhale all the way out and now I'm good. And I'm like, yes, right? Because to me, that is, that is my service, right? That is, that is how I am able to help my community in the ways in which my parents taught me. Um, I will say, then from there, I kind of got into the Ayurvedic world. And for Ayurveda, Ayurveda translates to science of life. And so it is a holistic lifestyle. So whereas I tell people, yoga is a prescription. Ayurveda is the umbrella in which that prescription lies. So if I am having a consultation with you and I'm your Ayurvedic yoga specialist, we will take into account what you're eating. We'll take into account your job, your sleeping habits, you know, your, your excavation plans. I tell people all the time, when we talk about your poop and your tongue, don't get weird. I'm your friend. But we literally 
to talk about your entire lifestyle, what your dreams are, what you hope to get to. And from there, we craft a plan that may include yoga, that may include a meal plan for the season, right? Because in Ayurveda, we are very much from the understanding that there is a macrocosm, which is our external world, and there is a microcosm, which is our temple, which is our body. And as the seasons change and they have a cycle and a pattern, so does your body. So there are certain seasons of life where there'll be certain foods that are, you know, most uh, beneficial to you. There'll be certain yoga practices, practices that are most beneficial to you. Mm-hmm. And I can be a testament. I know y'all might not agree, but when I was in my young 20s, the yoga practices I used to do are now not the same yoga practices that I do now. At 29, in my late 20s. No. See, I told you we all look young. <laughs> I know it's not a big jump, but <laughs> I am very much understanding that I am approaching a seasonal shift. And so from there, things that I do, eat foods that I eat are not the same because Ayurveda hopes to bring all parts of who you are, all parts of your being into balance, mm-hmm. right? When one part of, of your being is out, then there's going to be a manifestation of it in another place. So if, you're not, if you are not grounded to something spiritually, then it may show up in how you give care, how you love for people, right? If you are not able to speak your truth, then it may show up physically in the body through an excessive mucus or the other end of the spectrum of complete dryness of mouth and tongue, right? And so we work with our practitioners to create a plan that is individual to them and that brings about, again, their balance, right? The goal is that we're trying to bring everybody back to their balance. When they first entered the world, their purest form, their most complete self is our goal. And my passion, my purpose is to do that in communities that look like me with students who may not have access to these, um, you know, quote unquote modalities that we see in more affluent spaces. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm our youngest 500 in the city, in the area, and I commit to hanging out with the young people. You know, I commit to making sure that, you know, from there, I'm empowering our next generation with the tools to have whatever opportunities, whatever access that they deem they want to have. Mm-hmm. And, whether they're out protesting, like what's happening right now, they have tools and resources to regulate their breath and they are face to face with conflict. And they also have these tools for when they are in their own home and they just have an anxiety response out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, To choose a pathway that's best for them, but I am committed to that they have the options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big part of the work I do and the fun I have. And I'll pause right there, Reverend Dr. Lindsay. Thank you so much, Bridget. We'll be back to all of you with questions. Wow, just, I, I'm learning a lot. I, 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 am, I am being renewed here a little bit. <laughs> okay, uh, Reverend Linda, Reverend Linda. Uh, okay, so we need to unmute you. There we go. Uh, we need that. Can you unmute? And I, you? Okay. Yeah. And then I'm gonna spotlight you. All right. Okay. I okay. I wanted to. I'll wait till later to show the pictures. Sure. I yes. I wait. Hi everyone. I'm so glad for to be here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Smith, for inviting me to be here. Um, And as we talk about weight loss um, and the pandemic, uh, first of all, the challenges of the uh, pre-pandemic is that I've always struggled with weight uh, since I was a child. Mm -hmm. Um, And because of that, my late mother Lillian, she enrolled me into the Weight Watchers program uh, in the 70s. And um, I did lose weight on the Weight Watchers and I stayed on it for about two years. And I still believe Weight Watchers is the best diet plan because it just teaches you how to eat real food. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still remember <laughs> back then, I'm a baby boomer now, back then I still remember what they said, just put mayonnaise on one slice of the bread, you know, eat chips, but eat 10. 
you know, so they taught you how to eat real food. And so um, that worked, but, you know, fast forward, uh, life happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, in my adult life, um, I married at 19, moved to LA, divorced in 19, left with a two month old beautiful boy, no family there. So life happened, stress happened. And so again, the up and down weight. Um, but what's important with that is that I always exercise. So even though I was overweight, you know, I, I exercised. Um, and so I returned to Detroit after 15 years living there and life continued to fluctuate like with everybody else. You know, you go through things in life. Um, and so uh, I was under tremendous stress losing my mother and my father and my oldest sister in less than a year, uh, being t at three different times, uh, tasked with being the power of attorney, f attorney for my mom, which caused a lot of friction in the family, a lot of stress, um, weight up and down. And then in um, 20, I mean, in 2007, I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. So I just want to pause and say stress and breast cancer. Mm -hmm. There is a correlation there. Um, not in all cases, but I know the stress I was under that uh, there was no previous history. So anyway, I was uh, diagnosed with stage three breast cancer and I got my mammogram every year. I was very shocked with that. Um, and then, um, Fast forward to 2014, um, the, the stage three was in my left breast. 2014, it was in my right breast, but only stage one. So I was mm -hmm. having to get a lumpectomy then. Um, and so with all of that, um, I was looking at some pictures and um, I saw a picture that I didn't like. And like the previous speaker, uh, that was enough for me I needed to lose weight. I was on blood pressure medication. I was taking the uh, medication for the post cancer, tamoxifen. And um, so I, I needed help. So I went to see my doctor. I love her, Dr. Hadad Corey with Henry Ford Health System. And she helped me uh, get weight, my weight in, in order. But I needed help. I needed help. Um, and so she um, prescribed me fitoramine, uh, which uh, is a stimulant and also helps curb your appetite. And I took that for 30 days um, and it really did help. I lost over 50 pounds uh, since 2018. And it taught me, it shrunk my stomach, but it taught me how to eat properly. Um, and I still, you know, eat what I want, but it's all about portion control. Mm -hmm. And you have all these fad diets, but let me just say this, the old fashioned way to lose weight is count your calories. Mm -hmm. Count your calories mm -hmm. and watch what you eat. And that's exactly, you know, what I started doing. Um, you know, they tell you to eat smaller portions. So I eat three meals a day and two snacks. Mm -hmm. And my doctor said, a snack that's over 200 calories is a meal. That's not a snack. So I make sure my snack is under 200 calories. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and eating smaller portions. So one of some of the things that I did was, um, I stopped, I don't eat a lot of fast food at, at all. Uh, I may eat fried chicken once a month, if then. Um, but I just eat smaller portions. I eat three meals a day and two snacks. So if you eat like that, you're not starving and overeat. And that's the problem with a lot of fad diets. Some people say, well, I only eat one meal a day. That's not good because your body is storing up fat because it doesn't know when it's going to eat again. And so you're not losing wealth, uh, losing uh, weight healthy. So in addition to you know, eating, I eat, look, I eat potato chips. I do, that's one of my things. I love, I love potato chips, but I count them out. Uh, another thing is I'm an avid label reader. I read the labels of everything that I buy and I make sure that I am eating the serving size um, of whatever it is that I'm purchasing. Um, we eat a lot of baked 
chicken and uh, fish and, um, you know, a lot of baked food and not fried food. In addition to working out, I, I, I'm a member of LA Fitness and I've been working out there until the pandemic. And so um, I thank God that I was, I have a treadmill and an exercise bike. And just before they were starting to shut things down, I ran out and got some weights. I said, look, I, I got to keep this going. And so um, I exercise twice a week, religiously, twice a week for about two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And um, at home, I do the same thing. Like I have my workout outfit on, I get my bag. I really have to make it <laughs> something normal. Like I'm going to the gym mm -hmm. and then I come right down here and I start my exercises. Um, and with exercise, what's important is um, us as women knowing our body, being in tune with our body and, and knowing when um, something is not going right with our body, but knowing, you know, what your body reacts to and know what, you know, like the previous speaker, knowing what foods you really should stay away from. And the most, what's very important also is having a cheat day. I mean, my cheat day is like every weekend. I have a cheat weekend, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't go overboard with it. Um, but you can't deny, you know, deny yourself or you end up overeating. So I do about an hour cardio uh, between the bike and the treadmill. That's about seven miles. And then I do about um, 600 reps between uh, biceps, triceps, abs, and torso and back. And uh, that's strength training because strength training, it means you're building your strength. Because once you get to a threshold where you're doing good, you increase the weights so that you can get stronger in your training. Um, so basically my suggestion and, and my re recommendation is, um, look at it, if you want to be healthier, if you want to lose weight, I used to make excuses. Um, my excuse was I'm tall, you're tall and you're big boned. So, you know, you'll never be, uh, this size or that size. So I was comfortable um, go, I, I fluctuated from a 20, 16, 18, then I got a 14. I was satisfied there, but I still needed to lose weight. And so I did. So uh, I, I got lower than a, a size 14, 8, 10. And the thing about working out and, and watching what you're eating is you can't give up too soon. A lot of people don't see results soon enough, and then they give up it takes a long time to see results. You could put on weight real fast, but losing it takes so much time. But once you lose it and you see the results, you don't want to go back, you know? And, and you start really taking control of your body and of your appetite. And, and so um, my suggestion is be the best version of you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a certain size that we got to get that just yes. because any doesn't mean you're healthy. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of being healthy in your, in your body and being healthy externally, you know, with the curves or whatever you want to call it. Um, but you, you, you have, it's a combination. And so be the best version of yourself. And if you feel good, and the, the, the big accomplishment that I'm very happy about is that I got off a of high blood pressure medication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A big accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And um, with that in mind, when they say blood pressure, weight, uh, there's some people who have high blood pressure who's not overweight. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it has to do with your diet. It has to do with what you're eating um, and if you're over, if you're overweight with your weight. And so, uh, when you reach those type of milestones, it just keeps you on track. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to just show you, um, the picture, if you want to share, uh, the screen and I'll just show you uh, a few things. Mitzi. Okay. So you have to share the screen. I share the screen. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. And so here we go. Is that, is that right? 
don't don't see don't see anything. Um, so there should be something at the bottom that says share screen. Okay. Um, all right, it's it's, it's coming. Okay. Um, also wanted to share that um, you know, is it coming now? Uh, I don't see anything. Did you click share screen? Yeah, I did. Do I have, did. Do you have it already on the screen? Yes, on the screen. Okay. But it won't. Let me go okay. back. Okay. So we're, we're yeah. We're, well, that's all right. We'll just go back. Mm -hmm. um, um, run the presentation. Do, okay. Let me come back to Zoom. Okay. So anyway, um, there we go. So that is my story. Uh, I just had some pictures of, of um, my different various sizes. Um, but I just wanted to just uh, leave with just take control of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to your doctor if you need some help. There's nothing wrong with, with getting help if you need it. Mm -hmm. um, and get to a weight that you're pleased with and a size that you're pleased with. And do it for you. Um, and don't give up. Don't give up. Uh, just stay with it. Um, and then you'll be very uh, pleased with yourself and the accomplishments that you've made. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Linda. And yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, that's so important that we do it for ourselves. Right? Yeah. Um, and shaming ourselves or shaming other people never accomplishes accomplishes anything. Not at all. Not at all. Okay, so we want to go over some questions. So if you will begin to put your questions. Uh, in the chat box, and uh, I have plenty of questions. <laughs> right the ball down here. So while you're putting your questions uh, in the chat box, uh, I'd like to um, ask uh, some questions. If you want to start on my. Uh, so we talked about, you know, in this, you know, we had a lot of young people out there protesting, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, Yes, we have a lot of people out there protesting. Um, so, and some, you know, I remember the civil rights movement and the lunch counter sit-ins and the young people were trained, right? They were being trained how not to uh, respond to some of the most vile, right? Um, uh, treatment coming from white racists, right? Um, uh, so, and, and we may, uh, we probably presume, right, because there, there are agitators among the groups, uh, right, outsiders agitating and, and cops agitating and so forth, um, and, and, and uh, we've been talking about yoga and also uh, the way we take care of ourselves can have an impact on our ability to respond in certain ways, right? So if, if you are, who would like to, uh, can someone speak to that? Yes, uh, Bridget. You need to unmute. Okay, yeah, um, I definitely want to speak to that because I, I don't know, I don't believe in qu coincidences or things that just like serendipitously happen. Um, but you know, uh, Dr. Mitzi from from Instagram, we've recently started our 100, our journey to 108 sun salutations as we usher in the season of spring, as I was talking about, as our Ayurvedic practices. And we know, we know, or excuse me, as we usher in summer, and summer is a season of manifestations of things in nature. Can you, can you tell us quickly what a sun salutation is? Because everybody doesn't know. Oh, okay, sure. It's a, it's a, it's in yoga world. It's a warm up. It's a series of twelve poses that start with you standing. You go to a push up position. You go to a down dog that usually people are are familiar with, and you come back to a standing position. Now there are a few things in between that, but that's the gist of it: standing, push up, back to standing. Um, quick. Yeah, that's like the quick version. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and so. Right now, the people in my community, you know, via social media, we're in a place where we're working through those sun salutations. And I believe that we are divinely preparing our physical bodies, our mental bodies, and our spiritual bodies in the same way that in the civil rights movement, 
people were training and preparing their physical form, that they were making sure that they had the mental fortitude to endure challenges, to endure opposition, because that is essentially what we're doing. Today, we did 30 sun salutations with one break, um, connected to our breath. We do them outside in nature so that we are connected to our divine, that we are connected to our energy, and we, can, and we have to train our physical bodies to move beyond that. Right now in the city, we are, we actually right now started at 630. There is a civil disobedience training that a lot of the young people in our city are attending now. And a big part of that training is knowing what moves to take and what moves not to take and ensuring that they come physically prepared and physically strengthened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, Kimberly, thank you so much, Bridget. Yeah. And together with that, um, Practices like mindfulness and meditation and getting connected to the breath allow you to be in control of your thoughts and your energy. So there's a particular meditation practice that I, is prescriptive for all of the communities that I serve. And it happens to be a meditation practice where you keep your eyes open. So from that stable place that we were talking about, we um, keep our eyes open. Yeah, pick a point where you're looking at and focus on the breath. But certainly the breath has been in the news and physiologically, if you cannot breathe, the command to be still or calm down is ridiculous. You cannot do it yet. And we have a practice in place that brings our awareness to the breath and the multiple ways in which to um, take in breath and release it and even be all right in the absence of um, uh, a, a flow of breath that has been lessened, we can retain our connection to executive function of the brain and muscle control of the body. And so all the resilience practices that are now coming into play, I am very hopeful for because I'm with you, Bridget. There are no coincidences. This is a divine orchestration. You know, I could just imagine God and the angels sitting around the board table in heaven saying, what can we do? The people are crying out, but they're not listening to one another. Everything's got to go down. Everybody stay home. Stillness, right? Stay home. Get yourself together. All stop love one another. And so now when it is time to mount up and be in the street, we got some resilience, right? Because some of us had the first nap and got some rest in a long time because of the command home. So we are even in a place to consider new ways of being as we mount up for this experience. So um, in my community, there came a tipping point where it's like, wait a minute, we're doing all this yoga. Are you trying to lull us to sleep so that we are passive? And I said, no, here's the subtle difference. I want your body to be ready and resilient because now you can see it's time to mount up and fight. And the thing that we don't balance well, especially um, in general, is the stress that it right now is acute becomes chronic. Chronic stress, when we've been stressed so long or so hard, we don't even realize we're stressed anymore. It's normal. It's like yes. your, your ears are up here, mm -hmm. right? And anytime the body is physically under stress, then we lose our ability to be creative and to think um, uh, critically. And so all of these practices of mind, body, breath, and spirit are absolutely right now preparing us to be fit for this fight. Yes, great. So this, 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 this is great. Uh, so the question is, one of the questions I'm seeing is, can you give an example of a salutation? And I'm going to say this, I haven't, I, I, I've only been doing it piecemeal, and I have not been getting the full benefit that I used to have. I'm going to tell you folks, I had sciatica, I kid you not. Yoga and push-ups. I'm talking about the regular size push-ups healed my back, my spine, put it back in place. So, but I had gotten away and Bridget, for example, was on Instagram doing sun salutations and I'm like, she's going to get me up out of here. So I got up and when I went down in the, in the you know, the sort of, sort of, sort of the swan pose, I guess, right? I felt so much stress in my back. I did not know it had returned, right? Because I had not been doing doing this thing. Fortify my back, all right? To, to march out there, you better have strong back muscles, right? And strong leg muscles to be out there marching. 
so just that that one that one uh, movement, right, is so valuable. And I see what you're saying about discipline because you were talking about thirty. And I'm like, oh, that's nothing. I had a hard time concentrating on eight, right? <laughs> so, but I'm coming back <laughs> because it's nothing like having a strong body, and you can start anytime. So somebody's asking for an example from you all of a salutation. Okay. Salutation. Do we have room in here? Okay. All right. We're going to move back. Okay. The living room in my house is the yoga room. <laughs> Ready? Okay. Maybe a slight variation, but. Ready? And. So can everybody see us? Yep. Well, we can see you. We start standing in what we call mountain pose. We want to make sure that the feet are not too wide outside of the body and not too close together, but right in line with the hips. We engage the core, roll the shoulders back. Now, this is our mountain pose. I like to take a few breaths here so that we are strong and stable and steady. Inhale the arms up. Exhale. Squeeze the core as you go forward. Exhale breath all the way down. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, lower down. Bend your knees. Bring your hands to the ground. Step back, coming into that push-up position. There's an option here to lower the knees. From here, shoulders are behind you as the elbows lower. Inhale, scoop into your up dog. Exhale, curl those toes. Big squeeze in the core as you send the hips into down dog. Bend the knees. Walk the feet towards the front of the mat. Inhale to that halfway lift. Exhale, lower everything down. Inhale, strong core coming all the way up. Arms reach up. Exhale, the hands to heart center. So that's one sun salutation. And they are up, her group we're working our way to 108. And so each day I'm working with my Instagram community and we're adding five. So we started off at doing five, and now we're 10, 15. So today we did 30. And so tomorrow, 35. How did you do it? I, I made it to eight today, and I was like, she knows. <laughs> the discipline that it gives and the strength in the back, right? But it's going to take me a while to get that knot back out of my back because I hadn't been doing that, that back stretch because I have a curve in my back, right? The stress. Uh, so the question is, I want to come back. So there's some more questions here. Uh, and, and I want to come back after I go this question in the chat. I want to come back to everybody in terms of the importance of weight training for women at a certain age, right? The importance of weight training for women. Okay, so here's a question. We'll come back to that question. How would you introduce the mindfulness to families, specifically moms, from communities adversely impacted by COVID-19 and in extremely stressful situations. What advice do you have for them in terms of developing mindfulness of moms dealing with a lot of stress, uh, single people dealing with a lot of stress? <laughs> With a lot of stress. I, I say, but the question is moms. We're single people dealing with a lot of stress too, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, who wants to start with that one? Kimberly? Okay. So the thing that I noticed when I was doing work in schools as well, that Bridget may have noticed, is that it's all well and good to get the children to a place where they are mindful, but if we send them home to stressful situations, you know, so it's a village for a reason. And so what happens in some of the circles where I sit, and, and, and granted right now, the, e the easy ease in, uh-oh. I'm sorry, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I, I pushed up my hand, I'll be just pushing, excuse me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm a novice, y'all. Uh, Kimberly, can you turn your video back on? Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I think one of us has to stop pressing buttons, so. <laughs> yeah, I stopped. I'm trying to find out where your buttons are. <laughs> Oh, anyway, if you can hear me, 
this is actually perfect because in some of my communities, because um, we're getting the equity of equipment together, mm -hmm. I have um, offered an auditory response to describing mindfulness. Um, and so that means, oh, here we are, that we start with something as simple as the breath, right? So everybody, um, just take your hands, rubbing them together and just bring an awareness to the breath. If you bring them to the low belly and you can think of bringing air into a balloon, drawing that breath in slowly, peacefully and gradually and then blowing it out gently, release it, let it go. Because again, we get a lot of suggestions to breathe, but getting the instruction on how that is a revolutionary act. If I did nothing else in my practice as a yoga therapist, I could, I could be done for the day when people become aware of their breath, right? Because in that space between the inhale and the exhale, that little space that Bridget was talking about, I didn't knock somebody out. That was because we got to slow life down just enough so we can get a wise thought in. So really the first practice that I would introduce mm -hmm. is an awareness or mindfulness to the breath and just noticing um, the feeling of the breath as you inhale and exhale, knowing that you can control the breath. When you feel like you can't control anything else, what can you control? You can control your breath. And if you can control your breath, you can control your mind. If you can control your mind, you can control your body. If you can control your body, you can control just about anything else. So I would begin with practices on breath. Anybody, anything to add there? Okay, so um, I think that's perfect. Yes. Um, I completely, I completely agree with Kimberly. In my spaces of working with like brand new to yoga to mindfulness, um, we definitely start with the breath, and I usually start with an affirmation of of some you know short phrase to empower the people I'm working with, whether they're the students or they are the families of of our students, is reminding themselves of that affirmation and what their life is about, what their purpose is. And we usually gear it towards the group. So we come up with a collective affirmation and we allow that to lead the space. And on each inhale, we bring that into who we are. We bring that into all parts of our being. And so when we're in the external world, we remind ourselves of that affirmation that is so important. Mm -hmm. so, so for a mother then uh, dealing with this stress, it's maybe important for her to choose an affirmation. Right. Um, um, so give us, you know, some examples. I know recently, um, um, who was it? It was um, uh, Nikki Giovanni was saying that we should look in the mirror at ourselves every day and say, I am wonderful. Right. <laughs> I am wonderful. She said, until you get too old to refute it. <laughs> so oh, they don't, then it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> Yes. So, so yes, yeah, so choosing a statement, yes, yeah, so Kimberly is saying, I am statements, I am wonderful, I am enough, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I can breathe, right? Or I choose yeah. to breathe. Uh, so, so it could be all kinds of, and, and, and how often do we need to change that? Do we need to change the affirmation? Should we? How long does it take an affirmation to really you know, really have an impact on us. Yes. I will say, I will say this, uh, say no, it right. Go ahead. Uh, the word tells us that um, there is power, life and death in the tongue. Mm -hmm. And so we are divinely connected to the ability to remember the truth of who we are. And those statements of affirmation, and it's the difference between saying I am powerful and saying I'm not weak, right? Because you want to keep the focus on the positive aspect, even if you are manifesting it because faith, right? Means that we are believing in something yet though we can't see it, we're holding the space for what it is. And so certainly there is a feeling in your body when you finally feel it's true, something straightens up in your back, right? Something changes in your breath when you begin um, to really feel that settle in. So I think that you, you really cannot get it wrong, just whatever it is that we would hold and affirm as our highest self. Um, this greeting, 
which in Sanskrit, uh, people know namaste. They know two things about yoga, right? Downward facing dog <laughs> and this gesture. Mm -hmm. And this gesture, namaste, is a greeting uh, and a benediction, a parting. And it means that I see you. I see the good in you. I see the spirit of God may be in you, which means that we are not our behavior. So in the moment that you see me and I'm having a, a moment with my 16-year-old son and I don't look like the yoga teacher and you want to go, ooh, but I thought she was all, no. You're going to hold the space to uh, help me remember that this too shall pass even our moods and emotions, but we have to practice letting them go, which brings us back to the breath. We don't know how to let anything go because we're holding on to so much. If we can inhale, exhale, and release it, let it go, believe it or not, you've taken the first step to understanding how it is to repair. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lynn, uh, yes, thank you so much, Kimberly. Uh, uh, Linda, I saw your hand up, hand up, yeah. You're gonna need to unmute. Um, along with that and, and mindfulness and affirmations, we all, all know that the spiritual component is so important. And it, it's so important to uh, do your daily uh, devotion in, in the Word of God, uh, reading um, the Psalms, reading uh, those uh, scriptures that uh, encourage you. And um, with the affirmations, it changes with the situation. I have uh, notebooks of affirmations, depending on what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm feeling weak, I say I'm strong. If I'm feeling intimidated, I say I'm not. I, I am bold, I am courage. I, I have courage this morning. Mm -hmm. I am strong this morning. I embrace my brothers and sisters this morning. So whatever negative feeling you have, you, you, you uh, contrast that with a positive affirmation and say it out loud. Mm -hmm. So I think a combination of um, being mindful of the moment, setting some goals with your children that you're going to achieve together that day, um, just uh, staying connected and being okay with if you're not feeling okay. Uh, I, you know, we try to be strong all the time. That's inhuman. So give yourself yes, permission yes, to be yes. human. Give yourself permission to cry. Give yourself permission to emote all of the emotions that we have as a human being. But if we stay prayerful every day, stay prayerful, talk to God, ask for strength, ask for guidance, family prayer, do your affirmations, get outside, stay connected. We will make it through this. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Linda. Yeah, it, 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 is, it is inhuman to expect, and black women are especially expected to be strong all the time, right? You say black women are strong. You know, black women are human. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Right? We, we are human and we will be human. And it's okay. I was speaking to someone earlier today who asked me, saying to me, you know, I, I, I wanted to write it there and I couldn't. I, I said, let it go. This is, these are hard times, you know. I only wrote eight words. Praise God for those eight words. And tomorrow, mm -hmm. maybe you'll get 10. And if you do, fine. The thing is, is not to give up on yourself. Right? Amen. That's right. Not give up yeah. on yourself. We're gonna, That's right. And this time that we have right now, you know, the, uh, some days I don't sleep. <laughs> Exactly. And I give myself, if I don't, if I wake up at 3 a.m. and I can't go back to sleep till 5, I give myself permission to stay in bed till 10.30, right? Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. this time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. So here's some, uh, somebody asked, um, um, can you give, I mean, I, I, it, it kind of went by me. Rebecca, was there a question there that, uh, I saw a question. Uh, a cheat sheet? Yeah, cheat sheet, cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. what? Can you, who, who, who raised that question? Can okay, you, uh, I raised it. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> no, I, no, I thought it was really good, but a lot of people who need this don't know how to even access it. They don't know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm really, I'm fearful of what is going to emerge when people really start to come out and kind of like don't have these tools in place. And especially in spaces that we share together with other people in our community who may not have the benefits of these kind of things. So, you know, just for even just for the community, you know, as 
just a sheet, you know, mindfulness, yoga tips, just something like that. Maybe five things that people might be able to access. Hey, you might want to check this out. That's just an idea that I thought might be useful because I've learned some things just sitting here today. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, Rebecca, we do something like that with my um, with my students because well, since they're virtual, kind of like how um, Dr. Mitzi has the Facebook Live going. So I send them the virtual yoga classes and I send them like little little tidbits of things and they're completely open, you know, on Facebook. It's not like a private or closed group or anything. So everyone has access to literally the entire what is I think we're like week eight now. So eight weeks of yoga videos, eight weeks of journaling prompts, of mindfulness strategies, of breathing practices, pranayamas, of of journaling topics and meditation topics. They're all accessible um, on the on the Facebook um, page and I write them for students. So I write them in student language. So I say, you know, social media de-stressor. You know, I don't say, you know, our yoga talk. I give them like, hey, think about this. When I, what I mean is meditate, you know, mm-hmm. in, in children friendly language. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes, Linda. Let's see. Also, uh, on our website, Release and Refresh Women's Empowerment Series.org, we have a lot of resources on that as well uh, coping skills, uh, communication, uh, mindfulness, um, just a holistic way of um, inter- you know, interacting and things that we need to do uh, to stay empowered, to stay positive, and to stay strong. Um, but when I say stay strong, stay strong even in our weakness, okay? You can be weak, strong, but we have to understand that um, we are not, we're, when I'm, so the good thing about all of this, we're in this together. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone is experiencing the same type of emotions and things like that. And there are a lot of resources out there. So if you just do a Google search, you will find so many resources out there on how to to main to how to be mindful, how to stay healthy, mm-hmm. uh, and things of that nature. But uh, also, you can um, access our website, Release and Refresh Women's Empowerment Series, as well. Okay, so if you were to put your at some point put your websites in the chat, that would be helpful. So I'd like to push on this. And there were five things. Maybe I get one from each of you. There were five things. Uh, that 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 you will want to, uh, five easy things women to take women and men to take away from this uh, moment that they could take with them and I'm gonna write them in the chat. What would they be? Five things. Uh, uh, Kimberly, One, Edward, please start. Yes. So I'm gonna be practical. I know that in this age of technology, many of us use some type of device for tracking our health, whether it be a Fitbit, a Garmin, or whatever. I know that on my Fitbit, there is a tool on there for mindfulness that will take you through meditations mm. um, to help you. And then another one is, don't forget about Pinterest. Pinterest. I don't use Pinterest. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it's just too much. It is too much. I can't keep up with all of it. I don't know how people do, right? But 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 I'm asking for five tips, five principles, and I'm thinking that one of them would be breathe, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Breathe from each person. Breathe. Breathe, do not okay, then be, breathe. Remember to be kind to yourself. Okay, be kind. Yes, be kind to yourself. That's number two. What's number three? Okay, uh, give yourself permission to be human. Give yourself permission to be human. Self care is community care. Uh, so, can you put that? So, self care means community care. Is that what you said? Uh, Self-care is community care. Self-care is community care. So what do you mean by that? So, you know, it goes back to my whole thing of we are community, we are interconnected, that when I am, and when I am full, when I am my best self, then now I'm able to be a part of my community. And so we all take that same approach of that nobody can pour from an empty cup. We are not useful as empty vessels, right? That was not our purpose. So once we're filled, once we're restored, then now we're able to go out and do the restoration work with our community. And if each person takes that same mindset, then we will live in communities 
of full people. So it's not selfish, it's self-fooling. And I like to say self-feeling, excuse me. So we're self-feeling so that we can be the community we wanna be. So self-feeling, self-care is a priority. Community should not be the priority first, but self-care allows us to be a better, a, 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 a more productive member of our community. Exactly, say? exactly. Can I just add one more thing? Okay, hold on for me. I'm typing so fast. <laughs> okay, what I'm saying, and don't ignore your okay. mental health. Don't ignore your mental health. Oh no! So that was our. That was our. But that's good. That was our subject last. The last okay. Zoom meeting okay. was, right. was mental health. Yeah, we were talking about mental health, self care, mental health. You know, and so forth. But yes, yes, of course. So all of that is connected. And what we do to our body does it not impact our mental health, right? Oh, what we yes. do or do not, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, uh, for sure. And Rebecca asked, she said, is there a practice someone can do like for their breathing? And so, yeah, um, yes, Rebecca, the, the main two that I teach people and the simplest one I can get my students to understand is allow the exhale, make your exhale really long is what I tell them. In like traditional class, we do it to a count, you know, and so I usually teach the two, three, four because that one is a little easier and then you can slowly work your way up to the three, six, you know, into bigger numbers. But I start off with the two, three, four, where the exhale is double the inhale. So even if you want to start off at the, you know, most basic level of one inhale, exhale for two. Okay. And then slowly work your way up. But when we engage with longer exhales, we're literally rebooting, resetting our central nervous system to let our bodies know that this is a moment of rest as opposed to being in fight or feet or flea mode. And so I teach that to students, families, parents, everyone, day one, we can usually get that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 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 yeah, we had we had some some clinical psychologists and so forth uh, on pastoral care specialists and so forth on uh, our last Zoom meeting talking about self-care, mental, mental health, uh, and, and so forth. Uh, but what, what, is, what is so important, if you all were talking about, is the connection between, why the body is so important, because the connection between mental health, body care, and spiritual health, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot of times we, we prioritize the spiritual and neglect the body as if they're not connected and it doesn't matter, right? Exactly. And they're very exactly. much connected. I, I think we... we, we we are bamboozled, I think, into a somewhat uh, super, I, I, I don't know, superficial is what I, what I really want to say in terms of spirituality, but a, a fragmented type of spirituality, right, that is not holistic as if the body, uh, and we've been told that in slavery, right, that our bodies didn't matter, that they mm -hmm. could chain our bodies up and you just love God, the, the, the heavenly master, and do what he wants you to do, and you will be all right, that your soul is safe. And we have adopted that slave religion, right? Mm -hmm. All we mm -hmm. need is to take care of this, this, the soul, right? And we can neglect the body, and the body doesn't matter that much. But it does. Right? It does. My ancestors does. knew that, and they wouldn't try to, and that's why they tried to get free, right? That's so, right. <laughs> It's so, <laughs> it's so connected. I mean, how, if, how you feel about yourself. You know, you, after I started losing weight, I realized that problems I thought other people have, it was me. Because mm -hmm. I was overweight, I didn't like myself, so I'm thinking it's the other people, but I realized it was me. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, a lot of what we think has to do with how we look and how we feel. And, and, and the church has done us a disservice not addressing the whole holistic uh, uh, the holistic self. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we focus on one thing, but you're not supposed to go see a psychologist because you you know it, it's like uh, have faith. Yes, we have faith, but we still need to take advantage of the resources God blessed us with. And so there's a lot of things that uh, people are stuck and not doing because they're stuck under the guise of religion. But Jesus wants us, he died for us to be free in every aspect of our lives. In every aspect. Mm -hmm. 
free in our mind and our spirit and our body. Mm -hmm. So, and it all works together. Mm -hmm. You can't separate it. Yes, yes, it's all it, 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 it's all connected. I, yeah. I like that. I like the 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 Genesis story, which says that well, God formed them, right? There was this form first, right? And then He mm -hmm. breathed the, the ruach, right? Which you also talking about the Hebrew the ruach breathed into them, right? Then they became a living soul. We are not soul and body. We are living souls, which means, you know, you can't be a human being without a body. You can't be a human being without the spirit either. It's spirit right. slash breath, mm -hmm. right? They, they mm -hmm. all work together. We cannot neglect one. We cannot neglect the health of our bodies, the movement, as Michelle Obama, you know, talked about, you know, let's move. The movement, right, for health of our bodies and our spiritual and mental well-being are all connected. Amen. That's all right. So I want to talk about weights because it's so important, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as we get older, we can lose body mass. I mean, muscle mass. How yeah. does walking? <laughs> how how is how important is walking? How important is yoga? How important is weight training for maintaining this structure, right? This structure. Uh, which which holds up our brains, our bodies, right? It impacts our abilities to march, to sit, right? To do whatever we got to do. So who wants to, who wants to uh, say something to that first, please? I want to respond. respond. Well, weight training, mm -hmm. um, you can't lose, you, 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 it all works together. We were talking about the connectedness. You do cardio, you can't get strong just doing cardio. Cardio helps your heart and the blood flow. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination. You need the weight training to build your muscle and to, and to, to build your strength. Mm -hmm. So you have to do it in combination. Mm -hmm. Again, the strength training, I love. I love the strength training because it makes you feel strong, not only physically, but it makes you feel strong mentally. Yes, it makes yes, you feel yes. strong with self-esteem. Again, the connectedness of that. Mm -hmm. So it's important to start off at your own pace, you know, and then build up, do, you know, do the number of reps, what, what weight training with the, um, you know, the weights, doing your biceps, your lifts, you know, um, it, it's incredible the endorphins that uh, exercising releases, that's a stress releaser as well. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. it's important for us to add weight training. I don't care what age you are. You can get a five-pound weight and just, you know, sit in the chair if you have to sit in the chair and do and do your lifts. It will make you feel so much better, and it gives you strength, not only physical strength, it gives you mental strength, yes. and it also gives you spiritual strength. Yes, 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 yes. So, so what about using? If you, uh, so, yeah, well, I have waste, but there's something else we all have at our disposal, right? And that's the body. So, yeah. somebody talk about how the body, right? And where do people start? Somebody asked, where do we start? And using our body weight, right, to strengthen our muscles. I see the two Kimberleys <laughs> first. So we'll start with Kimberly Edwards, Kimberly Boyd, yeah. and come back uh, to other folks. Let me tell you, since I've been doing push-ups and I do them the regular way, one time, at, I, I don't like to tell my age, but anyway, at 62, I can do 20 straight and 30 if I want to. I'm talking about the way men do them. And the, the, uh, you do one, the next day you're strong enough to do two. The next day you're strong enough to do three. Hmm. And it, it did wonders for my spine. Okay, Kimberly. <laughs> it's um weight training is important your body is important but i have to bring this to the light too mm -hmm. you're short you have less body mass someone that's tall like me and those push-ups carrying extra weight don't do it <laughs> we're gonna come back to okay let me stop you for a minute. No, i do sit-ups no. though i do sit-ups the real way you can do sit-ups let me just stop Kimberly for a minute. <laughs> the old-fashioned, the old way. Oh, so, right? so I don't want anybody out there getting hurt. I don't no. want anybody out there getting hurt. Seriously. 
No, 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 of course. Put those no. knees on the ground. Put those knees on the ground. <laughs> Okay, all sit-ups on your back. No, I did not start. You, whoever you are, you should. If you're just starting, you should start against the wall. There are all kinds of YouTube exactly. videos to help. Start against the wall, push it off the wall. And Absolutely. Then start on your knee with your knees, right? Yeah. I, I, I'm doing it the regular way. I didn't start there. I worked up. Yeah. So no, I'm not telling anybody just to get out and start doing 20. Of course not. So we work up. But body weight is body weight. My body weight, my, let me let me hold it, hold it, right? Hundred pounds on my small frame is a hundred pounds on my small frame, right? One hundred and fifty pounds on my small frame is one hundred and fifty pounds on my small frame, right? Uh, so um, uh, 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 when I when I got here to Georgia, I found out for the first time in my life my blood pressure was high. Mm. For the first time in my life, I was borderline diabetic. I'm like, oh my god. So mm. I completely, and the doctor said at More House Health, she said, I said, I'm walking. <laughs> I'm walking. She said, you need to walk more. You need to walk more than half hour. You need to walk it out. But I knew what I needed to do. I needed to get back to my basics, which was push-ups, jump and roll, uh, eating right, and letting go of the bread. And I dropped the ice cream, and I dropped 10 pounds. So, <laughs> so it's eat, but, but I'm not... Uh, you know, yes, weight, who, your body weight uh, is not an easy thing to lift. I don't care who you are, right? Yes. I don't care who you are. Your bones uh, carrying your weight is your weight. My bones carrying my weight is still a challenge. It's, it's, oh, it's, absolutely. It's, it's, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I just want anybody out there getting hurt. But now that you're saying something about body weight, I think that a lot of times we neglect the bottom, the lower part of our body. And it's the strongest part of our body, and it's the part mm -hmm. that we need to actually engage. Mm -hmm. And if you're beginning and you don't want to um, do anything that's extremely strenuous, mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of us don't like squats, but squats are your friend. Yes, they are. If you can't do a squat, or if you think that you can't do a squat, this is a simple squat that anybody can do because you sit in a chair every day, mm -hmm. some kind of chair. Mm -hmm. Sit to the edge of the chair, sitting up straight to the edge of the chair and stand up, engage your core, en en engage your um, gluteal muscles, yes. um, your buttocks. Yes. If you do that 10 times, you're gonna feel it. You still do it three times, you're gonna feel it. Mm -hmm. That's a form of a squat. Yes. And when you get stronger that way, then move the chair away mm -hmm. and begin to try to go down using your body weight. Use the wall, doing wall slides where you go down until you're in a 90 degree angle to do a squat. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so you can do it um, down the wall. And in your own body. Yes, 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 yes. But it's important yes. that you keep those legs, um, the gluteals, the hamstrings, um, the quad. They're all important for our mobility. We don't yeah. like to use them. We'll get those weights and we'll start moving our arms and everything mm -hmm. else. But those legs, mm -hmm. carry us. So we got to give them some attention. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so, so and, and I, I want to, we got a question here, but I do want to say, and, and, and Bridget, and I think Kimberly, the other Kimberly has something to say, but, but I do want to say that there are all kinds of YouTube videos, right? Oh, yeah. Right, oh, yeah. To, to get you started. There are all kinds, right? I think when I, when I was seriously doing um, um, push-ups, I must have looked at, you know, 10 or 15 in terms of form, right? People give you right form because you can't hurt yourself if you're not using the right form, mm -hmm. right? So, so start where you can start. Look at the videos. How do they have them for beginners and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but a thing we don't know, right, is that push-ups, uh, yes, uh, uh, push-ups work almost every they work your legs, they work your buttocks, they work your upper body and your lower body, and they straighten your spine. I, I, I kid you not, I never, I never, except for yoga, experienced such a miracle working exercise. I am not lying. Yoga and, 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 uh, and push-ups. And I do squats too, yeah. So, um, and jump rope. 
right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, we start when we can start. We don't just That's start right. trying to do, you know, I didn't start it. I started at one. I started mm -hmm. on the wall. I started on my knees, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, uh, I think Bridget was speaking and then the other Kimberly and then back to Linda, yes. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna just say another, you know, in yoga, we talk about yin yoga as a pathway and then we talk about yang yoga practices. Yang is the more active, vinyasa, power core, you know, all of these very physical practices of yoga, but we have more restorative based yogas that move slower. For example, restorative yoga, a lot of people don't know that, but one of its benefits is weight loss. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People are like, what? What do you mean? You know, and in a traditional restorative yoga class, you match five or six yoga poses, the entire class. Mm -hmm. and oftentimes, they are deep supportive class, deep supportive poses. So take into account blankets, bolsters, pillows, and things. I've been recording them here from home, and I try my best to not use any like yoga props and use props that are found around the home to show people how accessible it is to do a forward fold, mm -hmm. to press on your digestive system, to press for detoxification, you know, to do a recline child's pose because child's pose. Is not an easy and not an easy and accessible pose for a lot of people, mm -hmm. particularly in their hips and their knees, or you know, let's just breathe. We're women, so we're bountifully blessed up top. And sometimes you you will lose breath if your ladies are you know too close to your airways. And so we will do you know knees into chest, or we will use straps and assistive props like that. But the purpose of restorative is to really allow the body the time it needs to rest and restore so that the elimination process can happen, right? We can expel the toxins, we can expel the stress, which promotes weight loss, which promotes a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Same with yin yoga, but it focuses on our connective tissues, mm -hmm. the pathways, right, that our, that our oxygen moves through, the pathways that our blood moves through, so that we're sure that we have space there and we're not tight so that we can find a full range of motion. Both of those slower plate, so slower pace yoga classes promote weight loss also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, so, so yeah, so uh, 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 Bridget is saying we could also uh, you lose weight through yoga. Yeah, I've taken some yoga classes while I was sweating. <laughs> Once I finished, right? Yes. Uh, Kimberly, they have the Kimberly. I noticed in the chat someone was asking where there's lots of um, uh, requests for advice on specific exercises to do for okay. so as your yoga therapist this is where i must say that uh yoga is for everyone not every practice is for everybody mm -hmm. right if you have particular counterindications, for instance if you have issues with your blood pressure or blood sugar um, mm -hmm. if you are prone to vertigo if you have anything going on with your eyes there actually are some yoga poses you should not do so this is the advantage of while they're the throw a rock find a yoga class that you can google if you know you have some issues in your tissues then what you want to do is be mindful enough to choose a practice and a practitioner who can speak to that Right. Um, so my advice is when we are able to go into public classes or if you come into a one on one situation, make your teacher aware of whatever it is you are dealing with. Be empowered. So, for instance, if you have heart issues, you should not be taking your head below your knees. Downward facing dog in its traditional version uh, is not for you. But there are many modifications. And here's where we can practice not only wisdom, but courage, because we get in our ego right? Mm -hmm. And we have this vision of what it should look like. And if she can lift 50 pounds and I want to lift 50 pounds, and you know, you don't need to be doing that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so the mindful practice of yoga is one in which you can, and I say in my practice, practice where you are, mm -hmm. which works, uh, shameless plug on if you're early riser, and even if you're not, and I put in the chat that I do a practice from a chair, I call it majestic chair yoga, where because we are sitting so much and because some of us are new to um, yoga, you can have the support of a chair. So balance is out of the issue and you can get a really great workout as you think about engaging those cores. So when um, 
Kimberly was talking about even doing squats, being mindful of how you get up and go down from a seat. Not only are you squatting, if you use your arms, mm -hmm. right, you're getting that bicep weight bearing mm -hmm. um, of your own body weight as well. So if you're early riser on Tuesday and Thursday morning on Facebook Live, um, you're welcome to join that practice. It's, of course, for free. Um, but yes, be, be mindful in all of your uh, seeking what works for you, get clearance from your doctor, and uh, work together with your um, instructor, whatever you are doing to make sure that you're working safely. Thank you. Yes. So um, please put those uh, yoga, yoga teachers, please put, please put your information in the chat so people can have that. Uh, where, to, where to find you at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> so uh, this is a question. Meditation first or exercise? Uh, 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 people don't look at meditation as exercise, evidently, right? So, so how would you guys respond to that? Meditation first or exercise? Say, depending on the length of these, um, it's totally up to the practitioner. Mm -hmm. Times for like these, you know, long standing meditations, and we say long, we mean like above 20 minutes. Usually, you want to do some movement just to prepare your body for whatever position you're going to be in. But for example, if you're doing a yoga nidra, which is yogic sleep, you know, that's an hour long practice that you're usually lying on your back for, and again, completely restorative. And then from there, you may not want to. You may be so peaceful and so zen now that you may not want to get into like, you know, full on Zumba, but, but you are ready. You are restored and nourished. So now you actually have the support and the vitality that you can execute that. Mm -hmm. but oftentimes in, in, in the classes I teach that are kind of high energy um, and fast paced with the kids, I get them to focus on their breath, then we'll do all of the movement, and then we'll go into our 10-minute meditation to get the energy out, right, so that they now can concentrate, and to Kimberly's point, in the beginning of our talk, to find that moment of stillness, mm -hmm. to, to that voice within, and see what comes up for them. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, you know, yeah, when I was at the Y, I, I found out about all these different types of, well, I didn't find out about all of them, but I noticed there was a lot of different types, right? Some of them really worked me out and really helped my back, and, and, and others were more, you know, just more breathing, and some really worked the muscles, right? The, um, uh, the isometric poses and so forth for long periods of time. Uh, so how, where do people go to find out about these different types of yoga, yoga and how they can, and which one, and, and what they do, right? And who's teaching them? I would say, once again, you can do a, a local search. Um, there is an organization called Yoga Alliance mm -hmm. that will um, let you know if yoga teachers are registered at Yoga Alliance, um, mm -hmm. then you can find who is teaching what practice in your community. Um, as Bridget was saying, there's some key words you want to look for depending on the kind of practice you're looking for. Mm -hmm. If you want a more of a physical workout, you're looking for a description that says vinyasa. And that's so, so Bridget, can you put that in the chat? I don't know if I can chat and talk at the same time. Vinyasa, which means that it's going to be a flowing motion. So that sun salutation that we were demonstrating would be in the category of a vinyasa because it's one pose moving from another pose and it's sort of like a dance. Mm -hmm. um, there are um, practices that, as she said, um, are more yin and restorative and those are going to be the slower. So she's got in the chat uh, in the category of vinyasa, power, core, ashtanga. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be um, your more active poses. Anything that's called gentle or yin or restorative is going to be on the slower end. Um, also, anything practiced from a chair generally, but don't let the chair fool you because, you know, we can... <laughs> it's just a piece of equipment that takes balance out of the play. Um, and then there are practices that are more contemplative and that may begin and end with meditation. Mm -hmm. um, Bikram 
is a form of hot yoga. So there's hot yoga. Hot yoga is practiced in a room that's probably going to be at least 80 degrees or higher. Bikram yoga is a hot yoga that's proprietary. So that room's going to be 105 degrees. Once again, your counterindication is, can you tolerate heat? Uh, if you don't tolerate heat, these are not the practices for you. Don't even go, right? If you have uh, heart issues, and if you've ever been seen by a cardiologist, you're in the category of one who has heart issues. Um, practice um, mindfully. Mm -hmm. um, and then because we are Americans and we love to invent things, there is trap yoga, there's trapeze yoga, there's, you know, so, so, um, as you are searching, what you really, really want to do is read the description that is given by the teacher to be sure about whether the practice is going to work for you. There are practices that are therapeutic that will say yoga for um, breast cancer survivors, yoga for um, uh, menopause is one of those where you know that the, the practice is going to be geared toward using poses that are going to speak to or do no harm for um, whatever issue you may be dealing with. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, so uh, uh, logging in late may be interested in chair yoga. How does it affect the joints? Somebody say, how does chair yoga affect the joints? Um, actually, it, it uh, depending on how you practice, it should be a lot easier on the joints. Once again, there you are seated in a chair, so you don't even have the full weight of your body yet. We can be in a seated mountain pose, and it is just as sacred and glorious as a standing mountain pose because mountains come in all heights and ranges, is what I like to say. So anytime you can find a stable position. And then um, the chair yoga will also pay a lot of attention to small joint motions and bringing the breath together with that helps to um, really uh, awaken gently any of the joint issues that you may have, uh, so much so that you may find that there's some practices you want to do even before you get out of bed and put your feet on the floor in the morning because they start to just gently introduce mobility into the joints. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have about nine minutes left. Uh, let, me, I, I, uh, let me ask this question of you all. It was brought up the seasonal shift that we go through, right? Uh, each of us go through a seasonal shift. I can remember when I turned 30, the very, that very day, I felt a whole shift in my, in, in my whole being. I couldn't, <laughs> 40, 40 wasn't so bad, but for some reason, 30 was something. I was, I was working in DC. I know where I was at at the time too, in, in, in a legal office. Uh, so talk about the seasonal shift, for, because for many of us too, the different seasonal shifts, right? In terms of age, in terms of menopause, in terms of this pandemic, right, and the protests, uh, how, 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 how do we think about self-care uh, in terms of seasonal shifts? What's important for us to know or to think about? Yeah, so when we're thinking about, you know, our Ayurveda clock, we kind of look at it in using the 24-hour day we have. But, and to your point, we also look at it in relationship also to like the season of life. And I will tell y'all, I'm 29, I just turned 29. 30 is I'm knocking on the door. And so I have committed this to be a year of wellness for myself, um, for my family. We have um, a high disposition for diabetes, for high blood pressure, for chronic illnesses and, and cancers that are prevalent on both sides of my family. And you know, I, in college, I, you know, took a, they, the doctor told me that I was on the verge of having high cholesterol as a 25 year old. So there was just a lot of things that, you know, I wanted to, to commit to entering into the next phase of, of life, into the next season, right, of life committing myself to. And to uh, you know, our panelist, Kimberly Edwards' point, is it's around, you know, the foods and things you eat from this pandemic. I lost 15 pounds around being intentional with the foods I'm eating and with my consistent, like you said, weight bearing in, in the yoga practice. Um, but at least from an Ayurvedic standpoint, we break up our seasons based on our elements. Mm -hmm. right? And so based on the composition of our elements, we, we categorize them as ether, which is space, 
So we think of space, again, macrocosm, microcosm of the body. There's space in our organs, in the digestive system, in the stomach, there is space there, right? When the lungs have exhaled all of the air out, there's empty space because there's no air there in, for the moment. Right? In our mouth, all of these, all of these um, vacuums, right, where we're holding space is ether. Air, which is wind with direction, which has a point. Fire, which is manifesting, which is your intuition. It, it burns things. And then we're thinking about like actual earth. So the grounding principles, the grounding foundations. And so these are all of the elements that we think about in an Ayurvedic lifestyle. And these elements come together to form our different seasons and our different types, or we call them in Ayurvedic land, doshas, but they're, they're, they're just your dispositions. And we'll, we'll give it that name in you know, friendly language. Um, and based on these dispositions, there are certain like treatments or suggestions that we would give to people. And if you're in, for example, the fiery stage of life, then we want to keep you in balance. So we don't want to give you more fire, right? Because if it's Are already- we talking fire, menopause? Well, yes. We, <laughs> uh, it is. When we're in the season, we're talking about that fiery stage of, that fiery stage of life, you know, in the season. Um, and we're also talking about that in just a 24 hour. So when it's the hottest in the day. Mm -hmm. So when it's already hot, you don't turn up more heat. You um, and you want to cool down. Mm -hmm. so we take that approach with literally everything we do around balancing. So we look at the elements and we see how the elements present themselves in the, in the person, mentally, physically, emotionally, and based on how the elements are presenting themselves, we want to work with our, with our practitioners to bring them back into alignment. Mm -hmm. So it's really grounded if it's heavy, it's slowness. It may look like overweight. It may look like depression. It may look like just a lethargic feeling. And so now, how do I activate you? How do I give this person who is super grounded and to the point where they're not at a position of moving to give them a little bit of life? Mm -hmm. Vice versa. If I have a person who's extremely fiery, how do I give them common practices like Kimberly showed us the Satali breathing to cool us down? Mm -hmm really hot, we do a lot of practices lifting the arms so we can vent out the rib cage, right? If you look at the ribs, that's the ventral system. So we want to twist and release mm -hmm. to the breath. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, thank you. So Kimberly Rowe, thank you for that in the, in the chat. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Bridget. Uh, moving magnificently through menopause. She's having a June 20th uh, event. Uh, that we, uh, yes, uh, 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 dbtlonline.com. Uh, so, she, and, she's, and she wrote in here, oh, be okay with change. So how, how do you be okay with change? <laughs> yes, Linda. Uh, uh. <gasps> Linda's got that one. <laughs> uh, uh, well, we want to hear from both of you. I saw Linda saying, but she couldn't unmute. Okay, there. Okay, so um, dealing with change, <laughs> Sometimes change hits you right in the face and it's like, woo, you know, it's something that happens quick. Mm -hmm. um, and as I learned on this journey of life, it's that it's all about adjusting, mm -hmm. making adjustments uh, in our lives and being accepting the reality of mm -hmm. the aging process and, and getting older. But I must say that um, as we shift in life, we get better, we get better because as you shift in life, the seasonal changes, you learn something in the previous season that's gonna help you move forward to your next season. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important for us to keep our mind, uh, our mind open and, and, and exercise our mind, exercise our body, exercise and our spirit, uh, stay spiritual. Um, but it just gets better. It, it, it gets better as we learn um, that saying it is what it is. It is what it is. Sometimes you could change is, and sometimes is you can't change. And so in our, in our seasons of life, what you can change, you change and you keep it moving. Uh, I remember, um, you know, years ago, my son used to say, why are you running all over the place trying to help everybody? 
why don't you do something for yourself? And I think as we shift in life, you learn that, yes, you can help people, but we need to make sure that we're helping ourselves. It's not selfish to make sure that we're okay. Mm -hmm. And so we just, we go with the seasons of, of life, the seasons of change. And as we get older, we should continue to, uh, to eat right, to exercise, keep our mind right, and give yourself permission to be human. And if I can just say that, mm -hmm. because sometimes we're so hard on ourselves and we shouldn't be this and we shouldn't be thinking this. And, and it's just so much, uh, just, uh, giving yourself permission, um, to fall down and get back up. Yes. And, 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 and when you're falling down, don't keep falling in the same mess. You fell in it once, you fell in it twice, now three times is too much. Get up and keep it moving. Yes. We just keep learning. Mm -hmm. Keep learning, stay connected to God, you know, stay spiritual, talk to people. You know, we, we want to hold things in mm -hmm. because we don't want people to know that you're vulnerable and that you're going through something. Find some trusted friends mm -hmm. and family that you can talk to. Mm -hmm. But ride this life, ride it and live it to your fullest. Because as we know during this pandemic, life is short and we don't know where that next moment is going to be. But make sure this moment that you live to your fullest in this moment. Yes, 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 Linda, and I, and I appreciate what you're saying that uh, because because what I hear you saying is that we we don't automatically get better, right? We have to make the choices so that we get better, right? right. We have to continue to work with our bodies, right? And 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 and, and gravity sometimes wants to we have to fight against the gravity, right? <laughs> fight against because the. the because there, there are things that can happen to our bodies that we can just let happen, or mm -hmm. we can actively, for example, take a yoga class, right? Exactly. Uh, exactly. So, so eating right, it is so true. You know, I've learned these last few years, I knew it, but I practice it more than the fact that 80, 80 to 90 percent of what you eat matters, right? That's, that's, that's like 75, 80 percent of the battle, what we eat eating clean, eating healthy, uh, eating appropriately, right? Eating in moderation mm -hmm. um, and, and, and knowing our bodies, feeding our minds, exercising our bodies, whether it's through yoga, walking, uh, body weight training or weight training uh, will help us to become better. We don't automatically become better. We don't automatically become wiser without feeding our minds. That's we right. We don't automatically become more spiritual or more, more godlike. So it has to be very intentional. Right? Yes. That we love ourselves enough to invest that time, that energy in ourselves, knowing that if we invest in ourselves, we can better uh, in more healthy ways, in more helpful ways, invest in our community. That's right. That's what Bridget was saying earlier, mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any, any final comments anybody wants to leave with our, our guests? Uh, Kimberly Edwards? I would just say, in this season of pandemic, I just want to reiterate the idea of it's okay to be still. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have this idea that we always have to do we 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 have to do i know i've heard people saying you got to work on your business you got to clean out your house how about clean out your mind <laughs> how about take time to just sit still and listen for god's voice for your next step because we're in this pandemic we're here for a reason and we need to find out what it means for each one of us in this season so that when it's time for us to move, we'll be prepared. Mm -hmm. We can't be prepared as long as we're, we're, you know, busy being busy. And the busyness isn't always, busy does not equate with productive. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's, amen. Busyness does not mean we're being productive just because we're busy. Yes, thank you very much. Other people, anything else you'd like to leave with our guests? 
Thank you so much. I've, I've heard some, some through my private chat, some in the chat to everybody how helpful this has been. Um, I, I'm so glad that we that we we do have it recorded and we'll go on YouTube with those who are unable to be a present can still be blessed by all that you are that everyone shared uh, and those who shared as well uh, during Facebook Live. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for all that you are doing. I hope uh, everybody got the information. Uh, if, if you'll send me your, also send me your emails and the time that you're doing things, I'll post it with the recording when I post it as well, uh, our practitioners. Uh, 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 each one of you blessed us today and blessed our audience. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody.